Hi there, my name is Juliette and I welcome you to my space. I've already filmed this video once, but I went on so many tangents that I decided to do it again because the main subject of the video just got like put in the back seat and I was just going off. So if you want to see that, tell me and I will post it, but I am not going to post it. Okay, so yeah, okay. <laughs> What's this video about? Well, it's about how to change mentally, but really rapidly and really quickly. A lot of people uh, in my real life have asked me, like, how do you do that? How do you change so much in, in the course of six months? You change so much, you have changed so much. Like I heard this through my school years, I've heard this um, in my more adult years. I've heard it a lot. And uh, well, I'm going to tell you the secret today. The secret of how to change rapidly, mentally, spiritually, physically, maybe. Also, I have a course out. It is on my website called newintuitiveview.com. So buy it if you want to. It's about rediscovering the intuition which hides in all of you and how to create your dream life. I also have a new meditation channel which where I will post weekly, but I have only posted once. But watch watch out or be on the lookout for more meditations. It's called Juliet's Meditation Space, so you can give it a watch if you would like and don't if you if you don't like it. Changing rapidly. You have a lot of people who say a lot of things, you know, you have stoicism, you have spirituality, you have uh, self-improvement journey people waking up at 5 a.m. who say you have to do this and they say you have to do that. So where the hell do you begin, right? The secret is begin with yourself. Begin asking yourself every single day, how am I feeling? I guess the, the reason why people don't change as much over the course of a few years is that they keep regurgitating the, their problems. They keep identifying with their pasts. They keep identifying with the, the anxieties of the future. And they think that th those things are part of their personality. Bitch, they're not. They're not a part of your personality. If you decide they are not a part of your personality, they are not a part of your personality. Because you know what Joe Dispenza said, your personality creates your personal reality. They are not a part of your personality. Just because you were shy 10 years ago doesn't mean that I am a shy person. I remember saying that to myself when I was in high school. I'm such a shy person. I am so shy. I cannot speak in front of crowds. I get really nervous. And guess what? I was shy. I got nervous. I couldn't speak in front of crowds. Even though I did, I was really nervous doing it. You know what? I've been through a lot of shit. I've been through anxieties, depression, suicidal thoughts. I've seen a lot of it, a lot of it. I've seen my mind turn in eight different ways. And I don't even know what that means. I've seen the worst thoughts that I've had. I've seen the best thoughts. I've seen the weirdest thoughts. And that's what I'm kind of encouraging you to do. See those thoughts or look at those thoughts. Look at what your thoughts are saying. You have to know what you are thinking in order to change your life. If you don't know what you're thinking, you can't change your life. But the fact of the matter is, no one knows what they're thinking these days. Everyone is just busy projecting their energy onto other things, onto other people, onto the news, onto this that they're watching. That is not how you do it. That is not how you get to know yourself and what you want. But most of all, it is not how you change your life. Everyone wants change. Everyone wants a better life for themselves. And why shouldn't they? You can have anything that you want in your life, but you gotta believe it. And how can you believe it? How can you know if you believe it? You gotta know your thoughts. You gotta know what you're thinking. Now, I'm not saying that you have to, when a problem arises in your mind, that you have to get to the nitty gritty of it and you have to solve it to its core. I'm not saying that at all. Because when you have a problem and you your mind gets get, gets swelled up and it gets it floats with it, you know, you, you identify with it because you are separate from your thoughts, actually. What the fuck was this? You are separate from your thoughts. You are not your thoughts. Because you are supposed to feel good. Your thoughts do not feel good most of the time. People have about 60,000 thoughts per day. 50,000 of those are negative for the average person. So your thoughts don't feel good. That's why when you don't think, you feel better because you're in the moment. Your thoughts don't feel good. They're always thinking about the past. You're always thinking about the future. You're never in the present moment right here. So what do you need to do? You can stop those thoughts, but you do not need to solve every single problem. If you think about a problem right now, let's say you don't like the way you look, right? You think you're too big 
or you think you're too skinny. And you start thinking about it or the thought happens and you, because something in your reality triggers it, the thought happens, you identify with it. it, it will only get worse and worse and worse and it will only get more specific and more specific. Problems know no end, no end. There's no ending to problems. Abram Hicks told this really, really beautifully. She has a, uh, a way of knowing or a way of a, a practice that you have to say more general terms to yourself. So if you don't like your body, you think you're too big, you say, well, my body function functions beautifully. I love the way my body just takes care of everything. I love the way I don't have to do anything in order to make it function. I love the way it feels. I love that I can walk somewhere and feel great. But those affirmations, they don't have to do anything with how you look, but they will get you in a good vibrational state, which then eventually when you keep that going, that momentum, all of the thoughts that you had about your body, they will fall away. And then you think about other things that feel good. And then when you just feel good and think about other things, all the good things come into your life. Like that's really, literally how easy it could be. But most people, you, and also me, because I'm not immune to this, I have done this too. They keep regurgitating their problems. They don't have any... <sighs> Ah, my God, like they don't, they are not logical. They are not supposed to be there. You are supposed to feel good. Your problems are fear-based. They're fear-based. That's, that's, that's what everything is in this world. It's fucking fear-based. The news is fear-based. Politics is fear-based. We are fear-based. We are constantly projecting ourselves to fear things or things of fear, you know? It doesn't have to be like that. It really doesn't. The only thing that you need to do is stop putting your energy onto other things. Start putting it on yourself. Start questioning yourself every single day. How do I feel? And when you don't feel good, how can you make it better? Sometimes, you know, you have a lot of people who say a lot of things. You have stoicism, you have the self-improvement people, you have spiritual people. They all say kind of different things, but they all mean the same thing. Sometimes you gotta do a little of, of all of three of those things, you know? I'm a big believer of, as I said, you are not your thoughts, you are your true you, and all of the thoughts are just kind of like floating around you. They, they, they really are. It's not real, everything is energy. Sometimes you gotta be still, do meditation, but sometimes you gotta do like, uh, wake up at 5 a.m., work out to get all of that emotion out of you and just affirm like crazy all sing every single day. That's what I've been doing lately. It's just affirming like I'm a, I'm a bad bitch. I'm sorry, it sounds maybe cringy, but who gives a shit? You know, I have great self-concept. I am so confident. And every time, because I had this today too, the, the things will start to float up again and the thoughts will be here and I will identify with it. And I'm just like, I don't want to feel bad. Like I feel bad again. And then I get reminded of something like, oh wait, I don't have to feel bad. I can feel good. And then I feel good again because I keep affirming that I feel good and, and it doesn't matter because the thoughts are fear-based. But people, they, they keep looking at other things to solve their problems. They keep, how spiritual people would say it, manipulating the 3D. Because you have actually more things than just the 3D. You have the 4D, you have the 5D, you have the 6D, I have a double D. I don't have double Ds. But you have more things than only the 3D. Your reality is not your future. It is the past. Because, oh, guess what? Time isn't real. You are living in a reality that you perceive. And because you've perceived it and because you're good at it, which Abram Hicks will say, you're good at perceiving things. You're good at translating vibration. That's why it's still here. It doesn't matter if the thought doesn't feel good. And it doesn't matter if the thought feels good. When you think it, it becomes reality. And when you think it more, it becomes more reality. That's why people say, well, I keep thinking about my dream, but I don't have it yet. Yeah, that's because you're probably more thinking about the things that you don't want. You gotta figure out for yourself which Kind of like, do you, I like the spiritual people more and the way they do it? Or do I like the self-improvement people more and the way they do it? Like, it doesn't matter how you do it. You just gotta do it. But you gotta know what your thoughts are. You gotta know what you're thinking. You gotta put that energy back into yourself. You gotta rediscover your intuition on newintuitiveview.com. You have to. You owe it to yourself to do that. That's how I changed mentally and spiritually. Psychologically, that's the good word, I think. That's how I changed my personality so much. Because if I were to still identify with that person that I was like six or seven years ago, I mean, I'm 25 right now, but I was so different when I was 19 or 20. I had insomnia for um, 
if I had to work the next day. I had street fear, you know, fear of going out. I had anxieties, like I had a lot of trusting issues. I had such bad self-concept. I was ashamed all the time for, for just walking somewhere. I was filled with anxiety, let's just say that. If I were to still say to myself, I'm a very shy person, like I'm so, I'm so shy, I, I don't know how to do this, like keep being in that victim role, well, I would have become really different today. The fact of the matter is, you are in control of that. Stop saying that you are not in control of that. Yes, it's not fun to know that you are the one who attracted these things into your life. But know that it is also not your fault. You are basically just doing the best that you can every single moment. I was attracting a lot of um, stupid shit into my life when I was younger. I was attracting a lot of unlucky things and a lot of, um, well, bullies, you know. But I know now that I didn't have, I, I did have control of it back then too, because I could have said like, okay, fuck all of you. I will just do this if, if I had a sudden realization back then, but I didn't. I'm not mad about it, it happened. So when people say in when they're manifesting it, it's your fault that you're, you've attracted that. Don't take it that, that way, don't take it personally. It doesn't matter that you did, you were doing the best that you can, that you could, that you, you were doing the best that you could have done at that time. It doesn't matter. But saying that to yourself that, yeah, it was my fault or I am in complete control over it, it puts you back from the back seat into the driver's seat and that means that you can change your life. Get out of the victim role, get out of it. It doesn't do anything for you. I don't care how many people have wronged you. I don't care how mad you are because at the end of the day, you're going to be more mad at yourself when you don't change your life because you owe it to yourself. You gotta stop limiting yourself. You gotta stop saying that you can't have your dream life because of this and this situation and the things that happen in my life. And I am such a shy person, I can be on YouTube. I had a dream to be on YouTube many, many years ago. I think back even when uh, Niga Higa or um, Michelle, I was watching Michelle Fawn or something, you know, or Jenna Marbles like in 2009. I had a dream to go on YouTube then. But I didn't because I put myself into the backseat and said, no, I'm a shy person. I'm anxious. I could never do it. I'm not worthy enough. I'm not blah, 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 blah. My personality was creating my personal reality. I got into my victim role. So take that power back for yourself. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how many problems you have. I don't care what skin color you have. I don't care how fat or how skinny you are. I don't care. You got to do it. What you got to do, you owe it to yourself to do it. There's no other way around it. So do it. Yeah, so that's how I changed myself a lot mentally, spiritually, and soon physically, because I'm working out again. No, but that's just how I changed myself. That's how you can change yourself. Be honest to yourself. Every single fucking day, just be honest to yourself. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this helped you a little bit. Yeah, I hope you change yourself, and I hope you take that energy and that power back to yourself. So, thank you for watching. Goodbye.